So as I mentioned at the beginning of Mass, it is the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 5. A few weeks ago, we had this reading uh, for Sunday Mass, and I decided just to go ahead and read the entire Sermon on the Mount as the sermon. And it only took, you know, 12 or 15 minutes. So I'm going to say I would encourage you again to read the entire Sermon on the Mount as we have just started it. You'll be able to anticipate what's coming in the over the next few uh, uh, times that we have uh, daily mass, the first, uh, the gospel reading. And, you know, the Beatitudes, the Beatitudes are, are mysterious in a sense, because God is pronouncing these blessings on poverty and mourning and uh, meekness and even persecution and blessedness blessedness in the face of these challenges and difficulties. You know, every life includes some mourning, grief, every life. Every life is gonna have some kind of, of impoverishment, something that we need that we don't have at some time or another. Every life, every one of us, is going to need to be merciful. These, these are elements of life. And when we face these things with God, we are blessed. When we do everything in our power to avoid any of these things, we will find ourselves on a path of darkness that we would embrace the life that God has called us to, which is spiritual poverty, that we would grieve deeply over the sin in our lives and the sin in the world. That's the mourning. That's the grief that we are to experience as Christians. And when we experience grief over our sin and sinfulness and the sin and sinfulness of the world, then we are blessed because we are on the path to holiness. Meekness is unfortunately very closely related or uh, just the way we hear the word. It, they don't mean the same thing at all. But when we hear meek, we probably think weak. But meekness is not weakness. Meekness is power that is contained and controlled. Not the aggressor who conquers the territory, but the meek who is strong but lets God. And so the meek inherit the land. So don't confuse meekness and weakness. Meekness is like a lion that is tame and the, and the lion handler. And God is the lion handler. And he, he will if you will, guide us in our lives to inherit the land and to hunger and thirst for righteousness and to be merciful and to have purity of heart. Oh, what a disaster it is these days. How much impurity there is in the world. I think every form of entertainment these days is essentially a kind of impurity. but God is calling us to a clean heart, a pure heart. I like that translation better. Blessed are the pure of heart. Blessed are the clean of heart and to be a peacemaker. And in all of these things, we need encouragement. This passage from St. Paul's letter, blessed be the God, the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of compassion and the God of encouragement. God will encourage us in our poverty, in our, in our meekness, in our hunger and thirst, and in being persecuted. God will encourage us, St. Paul is saying. And when God encourages us, guess what we're supposed to be able to do for others? When we know the encouragement of God, then we can be a voice of encouragement to others. How many people here have too many voices of encouragement in their life? Anybody? And then I know people who spend hours and hours in a day watching the news, which is a voice of discouragement most of the time. 
So let us pray for the blessedness of God, to be encouraged by God, and to be a voice of encouragement in our blessedness to others.